think, uh, just to recap wise of, of last week, um, very similar to what I said after the game. I thought it was obviously a hard fought game, but after watching, I do feel better about a lot of things. And uh, defensively in particular, uh, we played better than I actually thought. Uh, you know, one series in the, in the start of the second half was probably the one bit that jumps out. And then in that offensive, just efficiency, I think very efficient. Um, created some big plays in the first half, second half. <clears throat> I don't know, we just, we weren't quite as efficient. We didn't create some big plays. Um, I'm not saying to change modes a little bit, but uh, there were a lot of really good things uh, to grow upon. And then actually, you know, the <clears throat> last six minutes of the game got a lot of those other guys in the ball game, even though, you know, it was still a ball game. Uh, but you got those young freshmen running backs, got some of those young offensive linemen in the game uh, to, take, to take some really good reps in some situations where we still needed to move the ball and, you know, get some first downs and continue to run the clock. So as we move past that, uh, we all know it's a big week, and, and this is something that was, uh, you know, told to me, I think, the, the day after I took the job. Uh, not that I was looking at that in particular as the whole thing happened, but, uh, but over a year and a half ago, this was something that was brought up, and uh, not something that I spent a whole lot of time thinking about uh, until now. And so this is a great opportunity, and I think our guys are extremely excited as we went into fall camp, these were the things that were in front of us, and we knew that. This is you know, kind of the start. Not that the first two games weren't the start of the season, but we knew that this was going to be the opportunity at the point in time when we really, really get to see where we are and who we are. And uh, So that challenge is in front of us, and I think we're really excited about it. Questions? Mark, you have source. Luke, you kind of talked about the players and this being a special week. Some, some coaches have philosophy of, Hey, every game's the same. Do you like the idea that the, your guys feel like, hey, this is a unique type special? No, I mean, you know, us as coaches like to try to say, hey, it was a routine. We do everything the same way, no matter what it is, the faceless, nameless opponent. Uh, the realities of those things is, is probably not true. Uh, you know, some of us can hide our heads and live under a rock like I do, but our, our guys understand. Our guys are much more aware. Um, and so this was something that had been talked about since spring football. And, and, not by me. I'm not like standing up there and say, hey, this is, uh, this is Alabama week in spring ball. We're going to do this. And we work on the rivalry weeks. We talk about you know, the teams that we play historically. Uh, we don't talk about some of these games, but our guys are all aware of it. And, and, um, so, so for them, it, it's been something that, just like me, it's been in the back of their heads, probably a little bit closer to the front of their heads uh, too often. But uh, it's something where I think they really do understand. Like, this is what makes college football, right? There's two things. College football is great, but rivalries and games like this is what really kind of separates college football from from everything else. Luke, you talked about the efficiency of the offense in the red zone in particular. The passing game just hasn't quite clicked. As you look through, I know every play has its own situation, but has there been a through line or something you can identify? Like this? there's there's twofold. I mean, I think that uh, you know negative yards plays in the red zone are really they're they're uh, they're a lot bigger than they are out in the middle of the field. Uh, and then the ability to, to kind of say let it rip and, and be a little bit more aggressive. And so there's a balance there. <clears throat> but I do think, Tyler, in some of those situations, you know, there's some things where we have to go back and watch that, that we can be more aggressive on. Um, you know, but I think to, so those two fold, being more aggressive, and then obviously you got to avoid the, the negative yardage plays. Everybody knows things get tighter down there. Things get, you know, every, every inch is, is that much more difficult offensively. You know, and defensively, we know the same thing. So, uh, I think all, all in all, the, the, the efficiency in, in red zone in particular in the second half, but I think it has a little bit more just with our aggressive nature. Uh, it's been a, you know, not to say a concern, but we've been trying to say, hey, be smart with the football in particular in the red zone. Uh, we had some Aaron maybe once in the first week that, you know, you'd like to have back. You know, they weren't touchdowns, they weren't, but they were shots that you said, oh, that's probably not the time to be aggressive. And so we got to find that balance. Tyler's got to find that balance, but he's got to trust in himself and, and his ability to, you know, there's going to be smaller windows. And say, so, uh, Luke, uh, former assistant of yours is on the Alabama staff now with Colin. Just, is it, when it comes to preparation, is it, uh, are you worried just because he knows the defense schematically or the unknown going up against no. the offense too? No, I mean, they, they, we all, sometimes you know too much, right? I mean, I, I think that there's a lot of things that they're doing defensively that, that look similar to some of the things that, uh, you know, I would probably recognize. Uh, so, but there's, there's still, you can think you know too much. Uh, we've changed a bit defensively in, in some ways. Obviously, as Alex Grinch has come in, we've had some new set of eyes and, you know, 
in year two found the things that we think we do better with the, with the type of guys that we have. Uh, but there's a knowledge on both sides. I think there's a, there's a knowledge that he has of playing against the offense every day. But I don't think there's something that's extreme. It's not like, hey, they're going to know every signal. They're going to know everything. We're going to have to go silent. We're going to have to go like, <clears throat> if they worry too much about those things, just like the reverse, if I you know, watch the defense and say, okay, I think I know exactly what they're doing, then sometimes you spend too much time instead of you know, really focus on the things that you need to be able to do to be successful to win a football game. So. Uh, let's say there's some balance to that, but uh, I don't think that there's something that's underlined that's going to have a greater impact on the game than, uh, than the normal. Uh, Luke, from a big picture standpoint, you, you touched on it a little bit. How fair is it to use this game to have the number fourth ranked team come into your house? From a bigger picture, give that program assessment. How big is that for you? Oh, it, it's real big. I mean, every week is an assessment. That's the thing, right? You're, you're evaluating, you're assessing, you're seeing how you're growing, the things that you're doing. But you know where you want to be. And I think that's what we've always kind of, since we walked in the door, and they've always had that here. I think Coach Alvarez has been one of the guys that brought that mentality and that, that, that idea in here. And if you want to be the best and you want to compete with the best, then you got to play the best. And this just gives you that opportunity, regardless of what they're ranked, right? I, I couldn't even tell you that they were fourth. But I know this, over the last 20 years, we've been the best team in college football, and there's no doubt it's been Alabama. So uh, regardless of where they are at this moment, um, this is as good a football team that there is in the country, and, and it has been in for a really, really long time. And so no matter where you are as a program, it gives you an opportunity to assess uh, a lot of different things. Coach, with Jake Cheney missing in the first half of the week, how do you guys go about preparing for what the responsibilities of the mic? You know, knowing that he probably will play the second half as well. Yeah, you, you got to make sure that you got enough guys ready. And so those situations are, are not the easiest thing in the world, um, you know, but it is what it is, right? Jake will still prepare just like he's going to play, just like he's going to start. He'll still get, you know, probably not as many reps because you do have to get some other guys ready. You know, I think that Tackett will obviously step in and, and did on Saturday and did a really good job. And, and then you'll have an opportunity for, for a few other guys uh, you know, to kind of fill in and, and do you <clears throat> do you move some guys around? Do you do you try Christian Lake or move him in there in some situations? Um, there's a lot of combinations I think that we'll, we'll we'll look at and be able to, you know, have prepared and ready. And, and hopefully we won't need them. You know, hopefully you know nothing else happens and, and you know you, you feel pretty good about where you are. Um, but there's a lot of things. You know, Tyler Chance is a guy that you know had done a really good job and, and got hurt in, in fall camp and, and really kind of was. Only out for about three or four days, but really, you know, was limited in a lot of things he could do. So he'll take some more reps in there this week as well, and um, which in the, in the long run will help us. Luke, you obviously played this program a few years ago in the playoffs. You had a month to prepare last time, six times, six <laughs> days early this time. Just there are some pros and cons to that. Maybe not getting too far into it. Yeah. Just kind of. Well, kinda... there's a lot of different things. You know, I mean, how much do you go back to all the Washington stuff? How much do you go back to just what they've done the first couple of weeks? How much you go back to what you did, you know, a few years ago? Like, you know, you, you got to be careful. Um, you know, you still got to figure out what it is that you believe your, your players and your program can handle, and that's what you got to be able to go with. So, uh, we do have to find that balance, and that's the challenge to the coaches more than anything, right? We talked about it with you know somebody that has some idea of who you are and what you've done. Um, does that mean you got to change? And so. I think this is even a tougher week on coaches because you know sometimes you want to think you want to be perfect and you want to create some new things when sometimes in these types of games that's the worst thing that you can do. So um, our players will be ready. That they want anything we can throw at them, but I think it's our job to really make sure uh, we pick and choose you know what we expect and, and and get our guys prepared for those things. And then, like we always say, you have to be able to adapt and adjust because there's going to be a lot of different things that are going to happen. With, with your outside linebacker group, has, has that group been maybe as disruptive, disruptive, disruptive as, as you were like, and what stands out? Yeah, I think statistically, no. You haven't seen uh, the production probably from that group, but that's that's where sometimes you can get, you know, a little bit frustrated. Guys can start to, you know, get into their own heads a little bit. Um, I, I would say as we went through the spring football and through fall camp, that was a, a, a big area where I thought we were a lot different than we were last year in, in the – you know, you might not have noticed that on the Saturdays. And a little bit of that is what we've seen in, in some situations. Um, it, 
you know, in, in week one with a lot of the two tight end stuff, a lot of the, you know, stretches and, and things that stayed inside, and, and then even this past week with, you know, the multiplicity of you know, 12 personnel and 21 personnel, um, it did give those edge guys probably as many opportunities to, to create some, some havoc. Um, but it, it's it's hard. It's hard on them too. But that's where you got to kind of stand the test of time. You got to continue to grow, and there'll be plenty more opportunities this week for guys like that. If, but now it's even more critical that they really are sound in what they're doing because this is a crew that if you give them an inch, if you give the quarterback a, a, a sliver, I mean, you know, you know, six, eight, ten yards or, or not six, eight, ten yards like they are normal, is you can take the distance. So. Uh, it's one of those things where we're, we're right at that position, right? Those guys want to create more. They want to have more production. They want to make some big plays when <clears throat> sometimes and these are the situations where, guys, you can't be thinking about the big plays. you got to be thinking about the real consistent, sound things because if you get out of place on a team like this, and in particular a quarterback like this, there's some really bad things that can happen. You have spoken after Saturday's game about how you would prefer that players not get ejected for targeting penalties. Not sure want to go down this trip, down this one, but go ahead. Just what's the pushback you've gotten when you've called when you've made that? So I, I, I don't give push any optimism of yeah. that ever. I, I don't push a whole lot. I, I'm not. I'm not on the rules committee. I'm not. Um, you know, if I spend a whole lot of my time, like I've said before, you know, on the rules committees and different things like that, that, that there's so much changing within our programs. We got to really rely upon. The, the the people that are you know that's their job you know whether it's you know the head of the officials or, or whatever that is we need to rely upon them to to kind of recognize the you know the things that we're doing I mean we want to take care of student athletes and um, you know so that's that's a little bit more on them you know in the off season you'll bring it up but I'm not going to spend a, a few a few days down there trying to change the world when you know everything within your own program is constantly changing uh, just voice my opinion again that. We need to, somebody needs to take a good hard look at this because I would imagine there's a lot of coaches that feel the same way and, and uh, you know, we can't lose sight of some of these things, even though our landscape is changing, there's a lot of other things we need to worry about. It's still first and foremost about the, the players and uh, we need to make sure we give them all the opportunities. I know it's early in the week, but do you have any feel of where Tyree and Xavier are health-wise? No, no. I, I again, it's it's Monday, so I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't have an idea. You know, we, we didn't know until late in the week last week that Tyree wouldn't be available, uh, and we still didn't really know it was going to be a, a kind of a game time decision. And, uh, so I, I, I'm hopeful, and I would expect that everybody's able to play. But you know, we'll, we'll have to push that thing as we go in the week. Yes, you mentioned before you wanted to see more efficiency offensively, consistently, just uh, on the whole, based on what you've seen through two games. What specifically do you think are the areas where this team needs to be? better to give itself a chance, not only this week, but the rest of the season. That's well, I mean, we talk about that. I mean, there's, in week one, it was, it was incredibly efficient, right? I mean, it's, it's the number of drives and the points per drive and things like that. It's, we had said after week one, it was creating some bigger plays. We did that this past week. And um, this is the second half. I think the second half, we weren't quite as efficient. We didn't take you know, advantage of some of the opportunities that we had. And, um, you know, so I think there's a growth in that. I think that we all know that you know, some, some shots down the field and some, some ability to create some of those different plays is, is something we got to continue to grow with. Um, you know, I don't know how. Uh, there's obviously, it's, it's a part of the plan to what you got to be able to do, but there's a there's a nature to that of being aggressive, um, giving your quarterback some freedom to do some of those things and to take some of those shots is where I think that, you know, we're trying to figure out where that is. Right? We have the utmost confidence in, in Tyler Van Dyke and, and his ability to, to you know make good decisions, you know, and we've talked about that with the red zone stuff. But we also got to do a little bit better job of giving him some opportunities to take some of those shots down the field that might not be as efficient, right? You got to balance there and saying, hey, how do you become more efficient? Well, becoming more efficient isn't chucking the ball down the field always, right? But you do have to do some things and and, and give some guys some chances and some opportunities um, to find more ways to create space. And I think that. No matter what, offensively, I, to me, I'm not an offensive guy, but the number one thing I think about when I think about offense is creating space. And, and how do we do that? Um, we got to still can kind of grow in. A couple more, Jake. I said, Luke, with a week like this, I, one, just I know visits, like recruiting visits, are different when you're trying to prepare for a game, but just how different is it when you're trying to, you know, when you have recruits in town, but especially with Alabama having a big game atmosphere, what are your goals and objectives 
But these oh, no, every weekend, I mean, the guys, we only, we only get seven of these opportunities to be at your home, right? <clears throat> There's nothing better here. There's two things that are great here in particular in recruiting, right? Summer, summer recruiting visits and things like that. They really get a great opportunity to see not just the university of the program, but Madison in general, uh, game visits, right? I mean, those, those things are incredible because the atmosphere because of all that goes on. Um, so we got to take advantage of that. You know, the unique thing, it's, it's 11 o'clock kick, so there's not a ton of time. You know, we, those ones that are, that are the night kicks or even the later in the day kicks where you can spend some more time with those guys. Um, you know, so, so it doesn't give you as much time, but it's still as impactful and it's still as important. We'll do a great job with that, but the number one thing you can do a great job with is playing really well and create an environment in that uh, in that stadium that uh, they want to be a part of. Look offensively, I know a goal of yours is to, to play fast and put that pressure on the defense. It seems like this year you guys are rotating personnel groupings a little bit more, getting some twelves and different looks. Yep. That slows it down a little bit because yep. it creates that substitution. How do you balance that? Like wanting to get guys in the in the field yep. or on the, in the game, and then. So that, that, that is, you know, you got you got to pick and choose. You got to pick and choose your times when it's you know more efficient to go faster and more efficient to you know slow things down. And um, in the first two weeks, we definitely had a plan to say, look, we want to be in some more twelve personnel. We want to get a little bit bigger. We want to establish some things. You know, not that we didn't want to go fast, not that we didn't want to tempo things, not that we didn't want to you know, take shots down the field, but there was a definite emphasis on, hey, how do we make sure that you know, late in the year that we, we've got the tools that we need, um, we're prepared for that, whether that's two tight ends, whether that's slowing things down, whether that's being an extra physical, uh, that's a part of that efficiency of what we're doing. So uh, you know, this, this is the time when we say, okay, now we, now we gotta make sure that we, we put our best 11 out there and, and we give ourselves the greatest opportunity not only to be efficient, to move the football offensively, but also to create some explosive plays. Zach, look, I don't think you guys have been tested too far down the field uh, defensively mm -hmm. yet this year. Jalen Miller obviously is probably going to take yeah. a number of shots. How do you feel going into this one, with, with, uh, even though you guys haven't been tested? No, that's that's one of those things again, right? I mean, like, the uniqueness of the first two weeks, not that you know we didn't think people were going to take shots, but you know the type of games that they were, they were more methodical, they were you know, um, underneath stuff, run the football. We're definitely going to see it all. And, you know, I feel good. I mean, to be honest, we, you know, we did a lot of that in the spring. Uh, we did a lot of that in fall camp in particular, saying, okay, we want offensively to take shots. We're going to script some of these things and make sure our guys are being challenged in ways. But, you know, it, it's harder when, when all of a sudden Saturdays come, right? Because that's when it's really what it's all about. So we'll, we'll find out. We, we feel really good. We, we've done a better job, I think, of being able to mix some things up than to just always consistently putting our guys on islands um, when they know exactly what it is that they're getting and when they can take those shots. It does make it a little bit more difficult, um, but their challenges are going to be out there, and that is one of them that uh, maybe we haven't had a ton of, but there's a lot of others as well. Last two. Uh, Coach Elijah Hilt, he's a guy who's cracked the rotation and played a good amount in week two. Did you expect him to come along and play as well as he has in the first two weeks? You never quite know. Right? I mean, some of these some of these guys that are transfers, that's the, you know, the, the, the little bit of the difference of what college ball is right now. Um, even a guy that, you know, has come from a, you know, someplace else, like call it a bigger place, right? That, that walks into your place, Tyler Van Dyke, you, you kind of have an expectation because you've seen him play at, at you know, the highest level. And then some of the guys like Elijah that, that walk in here and you're not positive, you know, okay, what level was he playing? How is he going to translate into, into what he's doing? Um, but it's nice when you have spring. It's nice when you have fall camp and you see those guys. Um, and he was able to do it against our guys. He was able to show some things. Yeah, obviously, in week one, he didn't play a ton. Uh, week two, he gained a lot more opportunities because of the way he actually performed in week one. And, and he's a guy I continue to see us growing with. Right? I mean, the situation with having James of losing James has given other guys a lot more opportunities. Elijah is one of them. Elijah is a guy that probably has taken advantage of that opportunity um, better than anybody else. And uh, he'll continue to have those opportunities. And to be honest, he's done a really good job for us. Last one. Alabama's offensive line came into the season really regard, really highly regarded. Seemed to have some issues against South Florida. Just what have you kind of seen when you look at their offensive line? I, I think they're still young and trying to figure out the best combination themselves. You know, obviously the Proctor kid didn't play in week one and didn't play in week two. Um, so that probably helped them shift. And, and it, not like he wasn't there. I think it happened 
in warmups of game one, which obviously can throw you for a real loop. And now as you start to move guys from guard to tackle and tackle to guard and, and things like that, it's not the easiest thing in the world. Um, so uh, if anything, I would say that just finding that rotation, finding that, uh, that those guys, how they got to all work together, that's of uh, one position that in particular that, that guys have to work on the same page. It's the offensive line. And if there's anything that maybe has, you know, caused them some of those issues, it's probably just the idea that, okay, now we've got really good players. They've got really good players. It's just getting them in the right places and getting those guys enough reps working together. That would be my guess. Uh, you know, again, everybody defines what they think is struggling, right? And, uh, you know, I don't know that I've seen them struggle a whole lot, but, uh, you know, I think that you know, some of that shifting has you know, maybe been a little bit of an issue. Thank you. All right, thanks. Okay.